Welcome to the Trout Fitter Podcast with your host, Kent Rianda. How did you become interested in the Trout Fitter, Kent? Well, actually, my first purchase was the Trout Fly, which was the smaller store that was across the street next to where Rite Aid is now. Catch and release, all fly fishing, no bait, no conventional gear, strictly fly fishing, 1,000 square foot shop. Now, Roger Violetti, who was my buddy that I moved up here with, he was my machinist, at least we moved fluidics up here, you know, at least him and me, and uh, he had an expression, there's 493 places to fish within an hour's drive of Mammoth Lakes. Because like I said, if you get a map and you say, well, if I make the circle five miles in diameter, I make it 10 miles, it's just nothing but lakes in the back country, lake after lake after lake. So it just kind of depends on how big of a circle you want it you to, to draw. Looking at Lake Crowley, Kent, how is this lake similar to and then how is it different from these other lakes that you're referring to in this this general area well it's the lowest actually besides pleasant valley reservoir which is lower yet the lakes base most lakes around here we have are alpine lakes they're at eight thousand feet nine thousand feet or higher and basically very cold opening day they're still frozen over as they are this year those lakes Pretty much the fish just go completely dormant during the winter because it's so cold it's completely iced over. In the case of Crowley, high desert lake, you know, down around 7,000 feet, some um, thermal activity under hot springs and such. So now the overall temperature, it freezes over too, but generally speaking, it freezes out a lot earlier. It's just a warmer lake in general. It can tolerate fish uh, it's warm enough to even perch live there. Sacramento perch can make it over the winter, so like that. So it's a pretty pretty hospitable area for fish, and they actually can grow during the winter. There's there it's warm enough water um, under the ice that they can uh, can actually grow during the winter. In terms of them growing, is this lake somewhat unique in terms of the types of food that the fish eat? Is the food source uh, a little bit different in uh, Crawley than other lakes? No, it's pretty much the same. Uh, not every lake has this one component, which is called Daphnia. Daphnia is a, uh, if you look up at a biology book, an encephalopod. It's a little, looks like a little flea about the size of a grain of sand, but when you get 80 jillion of them in the water, so much that the water's cloudy, uh, that fish just swim through the um, stuff and just eat it um, like, you know, like candy. So they don't, they don't have to eat their normal food source. Their normal food source would be insects, primarily chronomids or midges, which come up out of the mud in the bottom of the lake and swim up to the surface and become adult insects and fly away. And during that migration, they get eaten by trout. That's their primary food. But They'll also eat uh, perch fry a certain time of the year and for sure eat a lot of Daphnia under the ice, which they don't have to eat anything else because there's nothing else. There's no chronomid hatches and there's certainly no perch fry swimming around under the ice to eat. So pretty much what there is to eat is Daphnia, but that's enough that they can actually gain maybe a half an inch in length of small planted fish during the winter versus lose weight or just hold their own. So that's a good deal. Would you say that the size of the fish in Crawley are the same as or bigger than the size of the fish on average caught in other lakes in that general area? Well, the only two lakes that are really kind of side by side in how their, you know, aquatics are and such would be um, Bridgeport Reservoir and, and Crowley Lake. Those two are pretty much the same. Same chronomids, same brown trout, same, you know, mostly the same, same fish, uh, pretty much, and uh, not across the board, but uh, pretty much the same fish in both locations, and uh, these chronomids that they eat and perch fry, and so there's, you know, they fish pretty much identically. Everything else is more high mountain lakes dropping off. If you go to Convict Lake, I mean, you're 100 feet from the shore, it's 100 feet down, so there's no 
you know, great big beautiful lake, but all that stuff out in the center is worthless as far as fishing, uh, unless you're trolling. But uh, at any rate, that's uh, that's kind of the only lake that's really similar to Crowley is Bridgeport Reservoir. All the rest are too cold and too high. Are the fish that are caught in Crowley in general larger than the fish caught in these other lakes? Yeah, there's now they definitely will pull a lunker or two out of the out of uh, June Lake Loop. They graze fish there now uh, in pens, and you get holdover fish, and you could you could probably get, catch some pretty darn big fish up in that June Lake Loop too. But I think generally speaking, Crowley's got a beat for size of fish on any one day that you went out there and caught five. One of them would probably be pretty good. Are there techniques on Crowley, as an example, where an average person can learn to catch perhaps larger fish than they might catch in uh, one of the lakes like Lake Mary compared to uh, Lake Crowley? For Lake Crowley, to catch bigger fish is really just being in the right place at the right time. And sometimes it's, you know, just it's very small, you know, you got to be right on this spot in this place on the lake. Other times, the fish are concentrated enough. If you're in that general area, there's so many fish there that you're bound to catch more fish and bigger fish. And so that's, that's really the secret. Beyond that, you just have to have the right fly on. If you're fly fishing and you're suspending the fly that's identical to what they're eating that day, or a little brighter maybe, so they can see it a little bit better, that's the fly that's going to produce all the fish. So if you've got that on, you know, then you've got that chance to catch those big fish and they're there in quantity. There's a certain time of the year on Crowley, primarily somewhere around mid-July, but it varies, plus or minus two weeks. When the water heats up hot enough in Crowley, that the preponderance of the fish in Crowley all move to cold water, translated for the most part to the water coming in McGee Creek. So they're all in McGee Bay. And within a couple of days, all these big fish move in there. It would be very typical to go out there and catch four, five, six fish over 18 inches in one day in that, in, around that particular time of year. Other than that, sometimes catching one or two would be a good day. Are the techniques like midging fairly easy to learn, easily translatable to an, an average person, or, or are these midging techniques very specific and and uh, very difficult to learn or difficult to master well there are some advanced techniques that have been generated over the last few years but primarily you're just fishing under the indicator using a bobber suspending a fly a foot or two off the bottom where the fish are and then when the fish takes the fly the bobber twitches and you set the hook and game on that's kind of the game and that's very easy to set up take your rod right into the fly shop, go into the trot fitter and just say, hey, can you set me up to fish rally, sell me some indicators and show me a couple of flies and they will show you what tippet, what leader and how to tie it up. And, and there's lots of different ways. So depending on, be aware of that. If one guy's going to show you one way to set it up, the next guy's going to show you a little different. Everybody's got their own preference. As long as you get that fly down there within a foot or two of the bottom, sometimes even four inches from the bottom, but right next to that bottom where the fish are on the lake, they're going to take it. So then it's just a matter of do you have the right size tippets and they take it more? Uh, you know, is the fly the best one you could have on there, et cetera, et cetera. One last question, Kent, is uh, you were talking about going to the trout flyer, trout fitter. So um, uh, there are individuals that can provide some advice there on um, perhaps locations on Crawley to fish and also the midge patterns that might be effective currently at that time, correct? Absolutely. That's what the guys at the trout fly do. They're hired on the basis of their expertise in fishing. That's one requisite for sure. And two, their empathy towards people that don't know how to fish or don't know how to fish at all to help them learn how to fish. That's what our mandate is, help you catch more fish. So if you don't have any idea what to do, Tell us you don't have any idea what you're doing. We will spoon feed you the information you need to get out there and start catching some fish. And after you get that under your belt, it will give you some more information so you can catch more fish. So anyhow, that's the game plan. 
come in and ask and don't be embarrassed to say every single guy in that shop we talk about it all the time all remember when we were completely rookies and didn't know anything and it was really embarrassing to say well what what are you talking about indicator what's that you know because everybody would say the word you'd hear it and do everybody do what it was but you but no it's it's everybody remembers not knowing a lot better than they remember the times now that they do know very well. So rely on our guys, just ask and tell them exactly what, what level you are and what you need to know, and they will help you catch more fish. That's the name of the game. Do you have also some digital tools that can help somebody learn offline, so to speak, instructional courses? We do sell a specifically for Crowley Lake, and soon, hopefully, a second edition now that's coming out for the Eastern Sierra, which is a teaching program. It's, a, in the first case, a six-DVD set. In the second case, a five-DVD I'm sorry, four-DVD set. And <clears throat> you then watch professional guides tell you how to learn how to fish right, uh, right as you're watching the DVD. 